issue of our day because, you know, we used to talk, you and I used to talk at large about televisions and all the stuff they were doing with televisions. People poo-pooed it. And now I want to coin a new term on your uh, radio program. Let's call it, instead of conspiracy theorists, let's call it conspiracy realists. The weight of evidence is upon us. And I like what, and, and, and this is important, I like what Donald Trump told uh Oh, what's his name? The guy Anderson uh, Cooper of the Central Anderson Intelligence Cooper? Agency. No, yeah, nobody trusts you. Seventy percent of the people don't trust you. And to watch the liberal left and the globalist and the elitists basically uh, crawling out of their skin over Trump. What you know? What's interesting right now? Telling the truth is absolutely contraindicated in this country. Nobody do- tells the truth, and so all of a sudden, Donald Trump comes along and tells the truth. And boy, the, the the fangs and the and the, uh, uh, the the their toenails grow out into claws. Okay, bring it down. Whoa, this is um. But you have to see what's outside. Like three times what's inside is outside. It's incredible. You know. You know, you've been seeing what's going on, and I will tell you, there is a silent majority that is fed up with what's happening in this country, and you see it. You see it. And it's just a, such a great honor. We're uh, here many times. We love the folks in New Hampshire. They work really hard, and they really love our country, and I want to thank you. So many things to talk about, and I think what we'll do is we'll speak for a little while and then we'll do some questions. You like that idea? Okay? Let's do it. So, you know, we have the Iran deal, and the Iran deal is a disaster. A disaster. And it's just so hot in my mind because it's so grossly incompetent. You look at it and you say, how is it possible to make a deal anytime, anywhere? Forget about it. You know what that means. That means we have to be able to go in any time anywhere. We have to give massive notice, and then we go in 24 days later, okay? I wonder what happens during that 24-day period. What do you think? And you know, one of the things, one of the things, yeah, I wrote the art of the deal, right? They didn't read it. There it is. Re- hold that up. They didn't read it. But you know, it's very interesting because we have four people over there that should not be in prison. And yesterday, I watched President Obama get extremely angry at a very fair question. Why didn't you get the four prisoners? Why? Thank you, Mr. President. As you well know, there are four Americans in Iran, three held on trumped-up charges, according to your administration, and one whereabouts unknown. Can you tell the country, sir, why you are content with all the fanfare around this deal to leave the conscience of this nation and the strength of this nation unaccounted for in relation to these four Americans? And last week, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff said under no circumstances should there be any relief for Iran in terms of ballistic missiles or conventional weapons. It is perceived that that was a last-minute capitulation in these negotiations. Many in the Pentagon feel you've left the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff hung out to dry. Could you comment? I got to give you credit, Major, for how you craft those uh, those questions. For the, the notion that I'm content as I celebrate with American citizens languishing in Iranian jails. Major, that, that's nonsense. And you should know better. I've met with the families of some of those folks. Nobody's content. And our diplomats and our teams are working diligently to try to get them out. Now, if the question is why we did not tie the negotiations to their release, think about the logic that that creates. Suddenly, Iran realizes, you know what? Maybe we can get additional concessions out of the Americans. Uh, by holding these individuals. ISIS is not to contain it, but to destroy it. He said so at the NATO summit in Wales. 
Welcome ladies and gentlemen, a Mercedes kind of sentiment. The Holy Quran John tells McCain us has not uh, talked about my Muslim faith. And you're absolutely right that that has not Christian come faith. My, my Christian faith. Luxury and trust in me to honor the free we all should be in. And the Holy Quran also says, Sundown burst into yin and yang, right and left, me and you. I'll put it with no driver or a screw. See, I did undo all that I knew. And you know this, and you know that, that. You know this, and this, and that. You know this, and you know that, that. You know this, and this, and that. Everything in the world is a reflection of the me Use your energy for something you want to Do what you always did, you get what you always got 2014, it's good to see everybody today Well friends, a couple of days ago I made a video about the uh, official White House Twitter account Tweeting this, you know, picture, this amazing, unbelievable, weird picture of Obama sitting in a throne and he's got this crown on his lap Everybody's pointing out that, well, this is this is a Photoshop picture. Yes, it is, friends, but it was tweeted several times by the official White House Twitter account. So, so today, friends, I've added a picture of the official White House Twitter account post. And here you go. As you all know, in the Bible, in the book of Revelation, our Lord and King Christ Jesus comes riding upon a white horse, and he has a bow. And he has a crown. And some say that the Antichrist will also mimic this and is also spoken of in Scripture with a crown riding upon a white horse. Yes, we can. 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 Thank you, Satan. 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 Thank you, And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man shins and the faith of the saints. On June 28, 2006, Senator Barack Obama gave a speech to the Call to Renewal Conference, where he explained why he finds it so difficult for America to use the Bible to help guide our public policy. Which passages of scripture should guide our public policy? Should we go with uh, Leviticus, which uh, suggests slavery is okay? Or we could go uh, with uh, Deuteronomy, which suggests stoning your child if he strays from the faith? Or should we just stick to the Sermon on the Mount, a passage that is so radical that it's doubtful that our own Defense Department would survive its application? Folks haven't been reading their Bible.